What's up everybody, Joshua Thomas Gray here with another episode of We Are Human, Guatemala style with the amazing Mark Katrovsky, the best human being on planet Earth, my favorite human being. Dang. Who I'm so sad because our trip is coming to an end and I'm going to LA and you're going to Bellingham. A moment of silence, please. All right, we don't have a lot of time, so. <laughs> so let's get going. <laughs> Today we're gonna talk through a little bit about what we did the other day. Um, and then obviously go into talking about some YouTubers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we just like, actually that day was super busy for us because with the wind and stuff, we got all of our video stuff pushed back. And so that day was simply like, okay, we have a handful of interviews to shoot, a handful of B-roll to shoot. And then we ended up going to Estella's house, um, which is a local here in Guatemala that we, uh, just go over to her house, have a meal there. She shows us how to make um, or roll or whatever you want to call it, yeah. um, tortillas. And then we end, they end up cooking that over the fire as well Which as with some... sick. Yeah, that was awesome. And Mark didn't mess it up this bad. No, he I didn't. It you should actually... So many times last If you're time. like listening to this on podcast or <laughs> on video, um, yeah, you should just go watch it and enjoy it. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, we just... They cooked up some tortillas uh, made us a meal, which we kind of pay for as a group, which helps support her as like a, um, yeah, as, as, as just a local there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they had some fried chicken, um, which was freaking delicious. And so good. She asked for if anybody wanted a second leg or wing or whatever it was. <laughs> and, and, chicken we're, leg. and we're like, yes, for sure. 100%. And, um, yeah, so it was delicious. Anyways, we ended up walking back which is not that far of a walk, but you pretty much just go up and down through like fields um, and little like villages and buildings and stuff. And you're literally walking right next to someone's building, but it's like a public road right. um, or pathway. Uh, anyways, like we came back, filmed some more and uh, we ended up watching the rest of uh, the Yes Theory documentary. The one that actually takes place in Guatemala. Yeah, so it was I, like... I felt that that was really appropriate to watch that film once I realized that it was shot here in Guatemala. I was like, okay, this is it. Yeah. And then it's actually interesting because I've, I've known of Yes Theory for a while, but I don't think I've ever watched any of their stuff. So yeah. I heard about this film from a friend and we were like, yo, let's just, we have a, an hour to kill at night. Well, right. we watched it two nights. Yeah. And then it was just like, oh, dang, freaking these dudes are doing so much of what we've always talked about. And, and that film actually was way more deep than I thought it was. Um, following, I believe his name is Omar's kind of life story and this one singular goal that he's had since a, he was a child. And he grew up in Egypt, I'm pretty sure. And like... It was, yeah, it's just crazy that he had, from such a young age, he wanted to climb the pyramids or one of the pyramids in Egypt. But that's like a no-go. You can't legally, people have climbed that illegally, but you can't do it legally. But he got all the way to the point of like getting it figured out. He got the paperwork. I'm not gonna go through all the details. Yeah. It was a lot. He got it figured out, done, goes to climb everything flipped last minute like la literally i'm pretty sure it was like the day before everybody in the government shifted everything and his paperwork was totally useless and then fast forward a whole bunch of stuff happens in his life he ends up meeting the yes theory dudes they're just continually trying to figure out how they could make that happen over the span of i think years or a year at least and then like Omar gets like a email from his dad that's basically like, dude, you can't just be YouTubing and being crazy and dumb and irresponsible. And like you left your family back in Egypt and you're a disgrace. And just like a really, like his dad's like last attempt of like trying to get him back to come back to the family and, you know, go back to school and be like a respectable part of society and, and their family and honor their family. And he 
literally like Mark and I were talking about the significance of that decision that he had to make to choose. Do I choose to leave behind this idea of being a YouTuber and telling stories and maybe climbing like a pyramid to inspire people and for himself personally with the hope that it could help people or do you leave that behind and go back to family and you know that you're making an impact and you know that you're bringing honor to your family but i mean for those of you who don't know yes theory they're just like a small group of people content creators of uh, videographers whatever you want to call them um that produce videos for youtube and their sole purpose is simply to um, experience culture and experience life in other nations or uh, parts of the world and essentially to share the story that story of like traveling um traveling but also not like the super resorty life right. all the time um and at the same time it's very i mean a lot of times it's funny a lot of times it's serious and enlightening right. and so their idea is to essentially um not say no hence right. the name yes theory yep um and essentially just go after life and go after the dreams that they have and so how that ties in with omar's story is simply like omar has this dream to climb this pyramid because it's so it was so rooted in his childhood of growing up in egypt that he has this dream to climb this massive pyramid and then somehow through connections through conversation they find that the largest pyramid actually is in guatemala it's the largest like in the world hidden away is, yeah, in the middle of the in the jungle. middle of nowhere it's like a three-day trek on on by foot and so that like that so now there's this clash of like his dad is saying hey you should stop this youtube thing he literally says either go get another job or come back to us to yeah. the family in egypt and if you don't then I'm disowning you. Yeah. And so there's this there's this tension and struggle where it's like Omar has this dream, this vision, and he meets the Yes Theory um, family or group and wants to pursue making these videos and making content as a YouTuber. That's his dream. And then his father's dream is completely different. Right. They, according to their culture, according to just how they're doing life, it's so drastically different. And so... There's just struggle, um, and it, it happens to work really well with the yes theory um, purpose. The purpose that yeah, I was gonna say the yes theory theory <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of like of like, hey Omar, like we actually want to help you, right? Pursue your dreams, right? And take on these things, no matter what happens. And he um, ends up making a very personal decision and choice. But if you haven't seen that documentary, you should go watch it. Yeah. Um, no more spoiler. We're going to stop there. You should go watch it because it's, yeah. it's great. It's actually Maybe really impactful pretty, and inspiring. Pretty spoiled it already. But yeah. for sure. And like on that note of like Yes Theory's theory, which is their purpose. Like if they didn't have a purpose and direction and deep rooted like belief and idea of what could be, there's no way someone would make the decision that he made. Right. Right. And there's so many YouTubers and stuff that don't have such a deeply rooted purpose in why they do what they do, that if they came to that extreme of a decision, it would be easy. You'd be like, no, I can stop doing this. I don't even totally understand why I do it, to be honest, other than it's really fun. It's cool. But you're right. Like I should grow up and come back and like go yeah. to finish college and, and do that. That's fine with me. That sounds good. But the fact that like they're so rooted in a purpose like omar believes so deeply that his life and his story and him saying yes to staying and being a part of this can positively impact the world and actual individual human beings is super inspiring it is so he did it and that definitely is going to help other people overcome the barriers of naysayers and the barriers of your own inner voices telling you that you shouldn't do something and that to chase a dream and go after it when it's purposeful and it's like that 
idea and how, like, I just want to meet this dude and give him a big hug because like what he did made me think so much about my own goals and what I'm doing, which we, I think are very goal. I mean, sorry, we're deeply rooted in purpose in what we do. However, after watching that, it made me question everything. And it made me realize like, I'm giving up nothing in the pursuit of hopefully sharing stories with people, sharing my own story, other people's stories, other cultures, and building that bridge of empathy and understanding. And yet, I don't think I actually believe I'm gonna be able, I'm actually gonna ever have a big impact. We're not actively planning and organizing large impact, which watching Yes Theory, I've realized like they're definitely planning and executing large impact on top of the purpose part. Yeah. And it made me re kind of think, and Mark and I talked a lot, and I was just like writing one morning all these thoughts of like, why do I do this? What's... And then I got down to the question. Like I haven't finished my Iraq film. I haven't finished my Haiti film from what, four years ago? And it, made, it just makes me wonder like, what, why am I not finishing those? And then I realized the other day, like with the Iraq film, I asked myself, what's best case scenario? Just the dream. And in reality, it is it going huge, I guess viral. Because best case scenario, it starts a movement where it shows the story of a white male, 30 year old American who went to Iraq in hopes of changing his mindset on what the news has given him the lens of what this place is. And realizing that I had no good thoughts about an entire people group. And I was like, that sucks. So embarking on this journey to hopefully prove that lens wrong. And obviously I did, and it is amazing. And so if through sharing that story, if it goes big, if more Americans see that, the hope would be that more people would change their lens and understand like, oh, these are people. And in fact, like a lot of Iraqis have been like damaged the most because of these wars. And I've never heard much of that. And it's like, they're amazing people and they love us a lot. And it's like, we could help them more, but I don't think many people know that because the lens of the news and so in reality, realizing like the stories I want to do are basically combating the news and all this negative information that's just being fed to all of us. And so the challenge of like thinking big enough and realizing like, yeah, we can, like we can make a movement in society and change culture. And that's the actual desire but to say it out loud and to verbalize it and then be like okay what does that look like and realizing like okay i need to be as willing as omar to sacrifice yeah. to make this happen because i do believe and we believe in our why and it's like we got to figure out then the steps to organizing and like we talked there's that quote from martin luther king that i saw I should pull it out. Maybe you could talk a little bit on some of the thoughts that you were having during when we were discussing this. Like when I asked you what's best case scenario. Yeah. I mean that I mean, I guess I guess the best case scenario um is just that, but I had I kind of it was more about setting myself up to think a certain way when doing certain things. Like in this moment, making this video, what is the best case scenario? And the best case scenario is, is sometimes really stupid and just illogical because it's so huge. Right. But that kind of a perspective sets you up to actually A, do what you're doing at this moment really, really well to the best of your ability. And B, it actually um, brings purpose and hope to what you're doing as well. And so the, the, 
the problem is, I think, is like when we make videos and the best case scenario is, well, somebody just watched it, did not feel anything, nothing happened, and it was just a waste of their five minutes of their life. Right. And I think that concept can be taken anywhere you go and whoever you are, um, whatever you're doing in the moment is as you're working in your specific field or you're going to school, the idea is like, what is the best case scenario of what I'm embarking on? Right. You want to be a doctor, you have many years of schooling. What is the best case? The best case scenario, you go become a doctor yep. and you end up like saving people's lives. Right. That is the best case. That is what you should be going into your eight, nine, ten years of schooling with that kind of mindset. Right. If the mindset's like the best case scenario is I'm just going to earn a lot of money or the best case scenario is worst off, which is very popular, my parents are going to be happy. Yeah. That's not going to last through any hard it's, times. It's going to be actually really difficult going right. through all that schooling. Yeah. Where, in fact, if you just turn it around and you start to think, what is the best case scenario of me working at um, anywhere you are, even as simple as like a coffee shop or um, maybe you're just like a bank teller. What is the best case scenario? Yeah. And, and tied in with like, what's the dream? What's the, yeah. what's well, your why? Why do you do what you do? And, and I, compiling those two things together will either answer, well, I shouldn't be working at a bank or, oh, I need to be thinking a lot bigger about what I can accomplish here at the bank. Right. And the thing is, there's like, if you're, if you just do what you're really good at in this present moment, wherever you are, if you do your best with that kind of mindset, trust me, it's only a matter of time until you get to where you need to be. Right. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. That's the crazy thing. And when you look at Yes Theory's whole story, um, it, it totally blew my mind when they were like, there was a time when we just wanted to say, hey, we're done with this. Right. And they were considering quitting everything. And then a month later, crazy, just one month later, right before the takeoff happens, um, a month later, Snapchat says, hey, we want to actually get you visas to go to the United States. And Snapchat ended up hooking them up with like, some work funding them and yeah everything. which yeah. is which is crazy but it's super crazy um it seems like we don't have very much time and we're on our way out but you should wrap it up uh, wrap it up with, with that this quote, quote from martin yeah. luther king those who love peace must learn to organize as effectively as those who love war it's so so intense for me personally i think for some people they hear it and they're like okay cool but that resonates with me so deeply and it feels so much of what I've been thinking my purpose and everything in, and, and it was very challenging because I don't think I'm working hard enough to learn how to organize. I'm not dreaming big enough on how do we make the Iraq film go viral. That's just organizing. That's getting the right people in the right places and doing the right things. And how can we actually start thinking a lot bigger in terms of, hey, if we create these films and we try to bridge a gap between cultures of people groups that are in war with each other, how can we bring peace? That's ultimately what I want. But when you say it out loud, when I say it out loud, I feel like, well, frick, now we're talking about politics. We're talking about disruption. We're talking about people who went to really fricking amazing schools, some that only the most elite people in the world go to. And here I am a high school dropout. <laughs> And it's like, I've never felt like not smart enough to do something, but this is the first time wrapping all of those thoughts together and being like, frick, like I don't know how to think that I'm actually capable of that, but that is exactly what I want to be pursuing again, like towards, I want to learn how to organize. I want to be able to create movements and culture through the stories that we share that build bridges of empathy and understanding, thus causing peace between two indifferent groups of people. And if we could just keep doing that over and over and over again, to the extent of how the news has accomplished giving us such negative feedback and polarizing people so much and making people actually hate other people, it's like if they could do that, 
then that's the goal. We will fight against that and we will learn to organize to bring peace and unity through human stories. And it's like that, all of it came together. And it's like, that's what I believe. That's what I want my life mission to be. And if comes, if it's hard, it's still going to be worth it. So, I mean, they're going to leave without us. We could talk about this for so much longer, but I think we'll end on that thought. But yeah, dude, freaking yes theory dudes. I want to hang out with those guys. It's just, it's cool to see YouTubers with such similar mindsets and like they're actually doing it. I don't know why the heck I've never seen a Yes Theory video before. It's literally the opportunity to change culture. It, we're right in the beginning phases of it and people like them are doing it. And the sacrifices they're making now in 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now, they'll be able to look back and be like, okay, it was all worth it. And on that note, Mark and I don't want to get left here at Eagle's Nest. So we're going to head out. We're heading back to Guatemala City. <sighs> Guys, if you guys want to stay tuned, there's some more fire coming. Hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube. That would be very healthy. It's down right below. Or if you're listening to this on the podcast, Spotify, Apple, where. Ever. Okay, it's, it's everywhere. I, it's literally it's so everywhere. It's crazy how many it's platforms. It's sprinkled all over the place. Oh, God. Anyways. You could be anywhere in any crevice on the internet, and this podcast is there, lurking. And if, and if you're there, if you happen to stop by, leave us a review. Ask some questions. And hit that subscribe hit those, button. Hit those five stars. Whatever. whatever actually, do whatever you want. Just say yes. Just say yes. <laughs>